All right, this video is gonna be expanding on the last video about how businesses grow and expand. So in the last video, I explained that uh, companies may choose to merge with another company to try and uh, grow as a business. And I talked about reasons why companies merge. Now we're looking at um, types of mergers. So uh, the capital letter B is just reminding you kind of where we're at. And uh, we're now under two was mergers and A was why does a company merge? So this is B types of mergers. So there's two types of mergers that basically uh, result from a merger. So you could have what we call a horizontal merger. So a horizontal merger is when companies uh, that makes the same type of product and similar products uh, merge together. Uh, so if you kind of think of it as uh, this is um, at the same level of production, so they make similar items. For example, uh, I know that for a while it was discussed about Time Warner and Comcast potentially merging together uh, because they both kind of uh, offer the same type of thing. Uh, you can also talk about uh, the whole, in the last video I talked about uh, Northwest Airlines and um, <coughs> Delta merging. They make the same type of thing, so they would be a horizontal merger. Uh, another example, Exxon and Mobil, they both uh, produce oil, so they or produce gas, so they are going to be uh, a horizontal merger. So horizontal mergers kind of think of as like marrying like, they're, they're together. Um, I particularly like this cartoon of mergers because it's like a marriage, uh, a merger is like a marriage, and so they have um, this cartoon where it says Time Warner and Comcast, uh, if they merge together, they would squish out the little consumer guy down here and the, I don't know you can't really read um, the speech bubble, but it, the little guy down there is a consumer and it says, sob, I always cry at weddings. And basically the cartoonist is trying to insinuate that um, Comcast and Time Warner, the reason they drew them as overly large people uh, was because they're very large companies and uh, the consumer gets very concerned about how does that affect them and how does it affect the price if they merge together. So that's horizontal merger. Uh, vertical mergers, on the other hand, are when companies combine that are involved in the different steps of making and producing the same product. They're like in the steps of production, they're not making the exact same thing. They're going to be along the way, along the lines of making a product, okay? Uh, so they have to be somewhat related. So good example, uh, for example, if we're talking about a car company, the car company could go and merge with a rubber plantation because they would provide the rubber for the cars, uh, with the car manufacturer, with the actual dealership that sells the cars. All of that would be in the steps of production and that would be a vertical merger. Um, also another good example, if you've ever heard of Ticketmaster or Live Nation, um, those two, if those uh, merge together, that would also be a vertical merger because I don't know if you realize this, but uh, Ticketmaster not only sells tickets, but they also uh, have a lot of managers that work with individual artists. While not Live Nation actually not only sells tickets as well, but they also own a lot of the venues where the artists actually perform as well as concert promoters. So it's kind of, and I wish that this graphic was honestly vertical to give you this idea, but it's kind of like this, uh, it's like this vertical merger going from the artist that is producing, that is actually making the music to their manager that's going to go and connect with the concert promoter that connects with the venues where the uh, artist is actually performing that connects with the company that's actually selling the tickets to us the fans that are going to buy the tickets so all of that is in the steps of production a uh, more simple version just to kind of give you an idea is, is that if we're talking about like for example a lemonade company if you think about a lemonade stand or a lemonade company let's imagine that you're talking about lemonade and um, as a result uh, you got to think about all the things that goes into making lemonade right so what do you need to make lemonade? Well, you need some lemons. How about lemons? You need some water. So this is very slow to write, sorry. Um, so you need some lemons, you need some water, uh, you need some sugar, right? So those are all the ingredients to be able to make lemonade. And that's just a very, very simple, dumbed down business model here. But my point is, is that if we wanted to talk about 
a horizontal merger, we would have to have the lemonade company merge with another lemonade company. If we wanted the lemon company merging with another lemon company, or the water company merging with another water company, the sugar company merging with another sugar company, that would be a horizontal merger. But if you wanted a vertical merger, you'd have to have the steps of production. So water merging with sugar, water merging with lemons, lemons merging with lemonade, all of that kind of would be the uh, vertical merger. So if you think about it, it's kind of like the rungs on a ladder. So if it's at the same rung, if they're making the same thing, that's a horizontal merger. If it is moving up the steps of the ladder towards the consumer, then it's a vertical merger. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. So, now we can talk about other types of companies that may be formed. Because of uh, mergers, sometimes you end up with um, some really big companies that are formed. So the first type is what we call a conglomerate. A conglomerate is a business that is made up of several companies, each producing unrelated products. And so uh, these are going to be companies that are producing things that are just wildly unrelated. Vertical mergers, there's a rhyme and reason to it. They're trying to make a product together, right? So they're um, trying to merge for efficiency's sake. With a conglomerate, it's just kind of random stuff. For example, I don't know if you've ever heard of a company called uh, Philip Morris. Uh, Philip Morris is a very big, well-known, old tobacco company. Um, but they were owned by a company called Altria. And Altria would not only owned Philip Morris, which made tobacco, but they also owned Kraft Foods. So think about it. Altria made cigarettes and cheese. Weirdly, wildly not related at all, but the company made both of them because obviously uh, they get more money that way. They get more profit that way. Another good example, Nestle. Oh my gosh. Have you ever realized how much Nestle actually makes? I mean, I found this graphic and I'm the first time I saw it, I was amazed. Uh, so Nestle makes uh, not only, you know, Nestle candy and things like that, but they also uh, own Stouffer's and Hot Pockets. Uh, they also own uh, Gerber baby food. Uh, they own um, L'Oreal, all the makeup and the um, hair products and things like that. They own Ralph Lauren. Some of these, um, you know, clothing uh, companies, uh, cat food, dog food, kind of a weird combination here, right? So that's a good example of a conglomerate because these are all these different companies that are making unrelated products, but under one large parent company. That's what we call a conglomerate. All right. The other type, uh, oh, another good example, by the way, is GE. GE has a lot of, uh, like, it's weird because GE actually owns uh, NBC and all of these uh, TV channels, but they also own, and they also own Hulu. But you know, obviously, they, they make electronics as well, so that's kind of a weird thing. Um, companies can also become multinationals. So uh, multinationals, as it sounds, are businesses with manufacturing or sales in multiple countries. So this could be that you know you're making your product in a foreign country or you're selling your con uh, product in a foreign country. Keep in mind that a conglomerate could be a multinational as well, but a multinational does not have to be a conglomerate, if that makes sense, if you think about it. Multinational does not have to be a conglomerate, but a conglomerate can be a multinational. So some examples, I like this graphic, it shows you some of the um, different companies, for example, that are multinationals, like uh, obviously Coke and Pepsi, but also things like GE and Samsung and Nokia and Microsoft and HP and all of these other ones. All right, that's it. That's all I got. Uh, hopefully uh, that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you guys next time.